What's up? My name's Logan Marks, and today is the first episode of what I hope to be a bunch of episodes of me making stuff. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel and have no idea who I am, I, by trade, am a commercial videographer. I film a lot of business commercials, website intro videos, promos, all that kind of stuff. I'm not the wedding guy. I'm not the guy that everybody loves watching their videos. I'm the boring one. I do the... I'm the unsung hero of the videographers doing commercial work that is a lot of boring stuff that people don't want to watch. However, my YouTube channel is where I have fun. I make summer edits for the lake area that I live in and all my fun stuff. And my YouTube channel has evolved so much. I did daily vlogs for a while and got really burned out. And it was just a lot to do when you have a full-time job and vlogging isn't your job. Uh, but one thing that I do really enjoy and have really gotten into over the last like year and a half is woodworking and just DIY stuff. I've been doing a bunch of work in our house. We bought rental units that I completely flipped both of. And today is the first episode that I'm going to put on this YouTube channel of me making stuff. I have no idea what the name's going to be yet. If you have an idea, leave in the comment. That'd be super helpful. Um, but today's episode, we are building this. This is a barnwood chevron top coffee table that I made for my mom's Christmas present. The wood on top of this table uh, my mom lives on like a third generation farm. Her parents still live there. She lives there with my dad. And the barn wood that's on top of this table, my mom actually helped me take out of one of the barns. It was, it was just a bunch of random rough cut lumber, so I had no idea what I was taking. My grandfather told me it was all oak, but I ended up finding some hickory, some chestnut, and just a bunch of random stuff that I used what I could, planed it, milled it, and made the top for this table, and then built this. And today's video, I'm gonna go through that entire process of me winging it, making this Christmas present for my mom. Let's do it. All right, so here's the deal. I worked pretty hard on this video, and um, you know, I, I realize now, after doing the video, why a lot of people that are woodworkers and a lot of just professionals in any type of building scenario or things like this don't film videos because it takes, it makes, the process take two to three times longer than if you would have just built it and you know had your headphones on and just went for it. So in my infinite wisdom, and because I have some memory cards here and some memory cards here that some are from my Florida trip and some are from a client project that I just shot that I was guarding with my life because I hadn't transferred them over yet, I wiped the entire memory card because I used the same one. This took a, it was like a three day, pro, four day process of me filming and I wiped the memory card before I transferred the footage to my computer. So the first day was me taking the rough lumber, kind of getting everything cut up, and then I jointed everything and ran everything through my planer, and just the whole milling process, and then the process of me building the chevron top, which is kind of the cool part of the video, is now gone and no one will ever get to see it. What I'm going to do is still make the video because obviously I loved how the product turned out and you know just how everything looks, but the cool part's gone and if anybody was watching this to learn how to make a chevron tabletop i'm going to leave a bunch of links in the description of the videos that i watched that gave me my idea um but yeah i messed up okay so step one in this table is um i need uh because it's going to have the herringbone pattern like the, the angles if you don't know what that is i'm sure you do if you're watching this and I'm going to put a base down that I'll be able to reference and you'll see. But MDF is always my best bet for something you need that's going to be straight that's also going to be covered up because it just seems like it's always straight and it's really cheap. It's, it's $11.95. Okay, step two. This is probably maybe my most visited section in Lowe's and that's the... Uh, I don't even know what aisle they call this, but it's where they have like the select pine boards and cedar, oak, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of just using a lot of the construction stuff I make. I use just like a nicer piece of pine. I'm going to join it, plane it, do that kind of stuff anyway. So for the base of this table, it'll work perfect.
So here's the wood to get started. Um, you probably already saw the video of me in Lowe's picking this out. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that'll think, you know, why in the world did you build that really cool top out of barn wood and take all that time making that and then you're gonna build the base of it out of cheap pine. My thought process, two things. I could have made the base completely out of that wood, but to get really long stretches of that wood that aren't, I mean, cupped and bowed like you wouldn't believe, it was really difficult. I had trouble getting those 16 inch pieces good. Um, but my other thought is I want the main feature of the table to be the top. So I'm still gonna build like a cool farmhouse looking base, but I don't want it to be the star of the show. I'm gonna paint this white after it's finished and then we're just gonna leave that wood because that's like that farmhouse look that fits my mom's house and fits everything else. Um, but yeah, so this is gonna be a super simple base. We're gonna need to build two sides and, well, four sides, two short ones, two long ones, and we're gonna put them together with the dreaded pocket hole joinery. I love pocket holes. Why does everybody hate pocket holes so much? Okay, so like I have mentioned many times, and you'll keep hearing this in all of these videos, I am not a professional woodworker. I have a ton of fun doing this. Um, and you know, that's kind of what I think this should be. So anyway, I don't have plans on SketchUp. I don't really heavily plan out anything before I build it. I just kind of get an idea in my head. And I would say probably 75% of the things I've built in this shop were pictures on Pinterest that my wife sent me and was like, I want that. So that's, that's kind of how all of these projects start. And then I have these notebooks. This is actually the second one I've went through that after I get one piece built or measure the space it needs to go in, that's when I actually plan things out. Um, so the table, three feet by two feet. And I actually just had to Google, this is my wife's phone case, isn't it nice? Um, I had to Google standard height of a coffee table. I know it's supposed to set like even or a little bit lower than your couch seat, and I didn't measure my mom's couch, but they're pretty standard. Everything I can find online said 16 to 18 inches. So I'm gonna shoot in the middle and do 17 because that's the kind of guy I am. Fortunately for me, I do not have one of the K5, K4 systems, Craig systems that like mount to a table or you can put on your workbench or whatever. Um, I just have, I think it's called an R or something. Um, yeah, so it takes a little bit longer, but I feel like I use this one way more. At some point, I mean, obviously I'm still trying to figure out how this shop works and build things out and that kind of stuff, but for now, I'm using this guy with a clamp and it takes a little while. The best way I have found to lay these out with pocket holes or to put the pocket holes in and keep everything square is to lay your piece out completely and just clamp everything together and run all the screws in at the same time. Well, not at the same time because I don't have 37 hands, but you get it. Um, however, my biggest clamp is, will only go max up to like 30 inches and this is like four inches wider than that. So, I have the Craig right angle clamp, which I cut a spacer block three and a half inches, which is how far I want this to be from the bottom. So that's pretty straightforward.
Okay, all four sides are together. So now, what I'm gonna do is put more pocket holes on the side here. I'll show you on this piece. Basically all I'm doing is drilling pocket holes and connecting them like that. This is how I almost always uh, put things with pocket holes together, line everything up nice, get everything squared, and just clamp it into place. So one thing that can be really tricky when you're doing boards, a bunch of them, and you didn't plan out, like I didn't plan, I would have planned the width out better if I would have known I was gonna put a shelf so I had an even number of boards across, like I didn't have to rip one down, but I didn't. So what I'm going to do is make a board for these little sections here to fill that in, which will be ripped down to uh, just a little bit smaller than the actual one by three was. And then I will find dead center, put a board dead center, and work my way out. That's probably not the proper way to do it. That's the way I've always done it, and probably the way I'm gonna keep doing it. In my infinite wisdom, I put all of my one by material up there behind a bunch of walnut that I uh, had already done some milling to for something else. And just made a huge mess and fell off of a five gallon bucket getting it down. These are the things that people don't actually show you on their woodworking channels. I would have showed you, but I wasn't filming it. So now I have to cut down 14 of these boards. Let's do it. just laid all of these pieces out and um, the reason I did that was because it's just easier instead of me measuring and trying to figure out like exact little eighths of an inch um, I wanted to see how much one of these needed to be ripped down these are two and a half inches wide the gap here is two inches wide so what I'm going to do is just rip one of these down to So I do not get insanely technical when I do these like barn door patterns here on the ends of tables. This is how I did it in all of the ones in our house and they worked out fine. Um, instead of using like a, my digital square and finding like an exact angle and all that kind of stuff, what I do is just hold it up at both of the spots and what you want to do is line it up on each one of the corners so you can see you know, that it's gonna touch here and touch here and be flat. Line it up with corners and I just take a pencil behind it and mark, line that up on my miter saw and cut it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other pieces, just one at a time instead of one piece across.
right, so after uh, messing around with a few ideas, um, I tried pocket holes. They don't work because you can't get a drill in and they just, you'd be able to see them pretty bad. Um, all the other ones, all the other pocket holes I have are either here or now below what's this shelf. Um, so you don't see them. I mean, if you like look up under the table, you'll see them. But for the most part, once the top's on, they're completely hidden. And if I would have done pocket holes in the back of these, you would have been able to see it pretty pretty well. Um, and that wouldn't look super great. Um, so anyway, I just went with glue and jammed my <laughs> brad nailer as tight as I could get it in there and shot inch and a half brad nails to tack it down while the glue dries. Um, you do have the little nail head holes, which some people are super picky about, but I'll end up just spotting the wood filler over those, whether I stain this, paint it, kind of on the fence now. I was gonna paint it like a, an off-white. It's probably what I'll still do, but just in case. Um, that, uh, that completes the base of the table. So now we get to move on to picture framing out the top. Okay, we're back in the shop, which my wife will be extremely excited about. She gets really frustrated when I do what I did and take stuff inside. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put the frame pieces. I'm gonna set the frame pieces around, put glue on the sides and all the joints and miters on the corners. And then I'm gonna take a band clamp, put it around the edge to kind of hold everything in place. And then I'm gonna tack it with some brad nails and let the glue dry. And then this table's ready to put together. There you go. Oh, my camera's not up high enough. You get the feeling now. All right, so we gotta put some pocket holes in the base, get this thing mounted, and this table is done. In my infinite wisdom, I forgot to put the pocket holes across here to be able to screw the tabletop up. I even watched the video last night of me talking about it and said I was going to put those in and didn't. Now, I don't have enough room between here and here to get the Craig jig on here and fit my drill to drill through. So I'm just gonna cut two or three pieces to go across the top here, pocket hole those in, and then just screw straight up through. Okay, problem solved. Now the moment of truth. Put my tripod on one of the workbenches there so you can see, but I think this looks really cool. I'm really happy with it. Um, my mom's gonna be super excited because it's like, you know, it's wood from her family farm. So it's it's a table that's got a lot of meaning and um, I made it. So I mean, how could she not like it? Good to go. Let's get this thing attached. You can probably see some flex coming out of the table. The piece of plywood, the three quarter inch plywood that I used to build the herringbone top, I think because I left it out here when it was cold the uh, with the glue and stuff, it got just a little bit of a warp to it, but these are pulling it out and the top's still pretty flush. So, I mean, it's a farmhouse table. They're supposed to be crooked, right? 